Welcome back to another episode of the Chieftain Rewind. The Utica Chieftains are coming into Week 6 with a 2-3 record after suffering a heartbreaking loss to Lakeview on homecoming. Every game from here on out is crucial for the Chieftains to remain in the playoff hunt. And their next opponent is feeling the same pressure. The Stevenson Titans also have a 2-3 record and are coming off a 29-15 loss to Eisenhower. Now both teams are facing adversity this season after they both won their first two games of the season and followed that up with three game losing streaks. And both face tough opponents in Chippewa Valley and Warren Mott in the coming weeks. This week six matchup is a must win for both squads. Before we see the highlights, let's get to our next senior feature. This week we hear from cornerback and receiver Shane Lutz. I guess I started playing football because my brother was really into it when he was younger and I didn't really get into it until uh, junior high, but I was just watching him play and stuff and it, it just inspired me to play. Honestly, it, it wasn't really necessarily any injuries or anything, but like my attitude at a time was not where I wanted it to be. I was. I had a bad attitude and then I, something clicked and it turned around for me and it just made me into like a leader, a harder worker, and it just made me into a better man and football player. Uh, you know Kev? What I need to do to improve is just keep bringing that leadership and energy to every day to practice. Uh, you know, he's been, he's been a leader, he's a hard worker. We, we expect him to be a leader on our, of our defensive backs. He's a returning senior starter at corner, so um, you know, we're expecting big things for him. and. Uh, you know, I'm excited for him for his senior year. Uh, he's fast, you know, he's a dog, being how small he is, but, you know, he's got the attitude of an animal. Uh, wow, he's got a big heart. I mean, he may look like he's undersized, but he knows how to play. He's got a big heart, and that shows on the field. Shane, uh, I've been playing with him since freshman year. He's a really good friend, great player. He just got that different kind of grit in him, go out there and play and punch people in the face. Shane's been a great asset for this team, so he's uh, started playing corner last year and he's been doing nothing but work his butt off so we're really looking for him to uh, lock some people down and uh, get some good uh, energy out of the defense from him. Uh, my overall experience has just it, it's taught me a lot of life, life lessons and just made me into like a better man and I think I, I couldn't get that anywhere else. After this quick timeout we'll show the highlights from this highly anticipated matchup and stay tuned till the end for a special treat. The Chief and Rewind will be right back. All right, this is Adam, take two. Mark? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. There's just one place where students are students first and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a complete education. In a rivalry that dates back to 1968, the Utica Chieftains and the Stevenson Titans stand in each other's way in 2019 to get themselves back in the playoff hunt. This is your Week 6 matchup. The Chieftains get the ball first, and Gib Olszewski would get a heavy workload in this game as he starts off his night with a first down. But the drive would stall out, forcing Utica to punt. On Stevenson's first play, the senior Nick Wingfield breaks a few tackles and takes this one for 26 yards to the 41-yard line. The Chieftain defense takes him to the fourth down, and the Titans go for it, but the pass is broken up by Dylan Delito, and Utica takes possession on Stevenson's 48-yard line. 
On the next play for the Chieftains, Olszewski runs 19 yards to the 29-yard line and moves the chains. But the Titans take them to fourth down, and Zach Jacobs looks to break through, but he stopped just short, and it's Stevenson's ball. Neither offense could get much of anything going for the rest of the first half, and the game remains scoreless at halftime. After stalling out the Titans' first drive of the half, the Chieftains get excellent field position. And Utica starts their first drive of the half with a 32-yard run by who other than Gabe Olszewski. With 10 yards to the goal, Olszewski looks to score here, but it's stripped out of his hands by Latrell Stovall, and the Titans keep the game scoreless. With the Titans deep in their own zone now, Nick Wingfield gets them out of danger with this first down run. On second down, Dylan Kleinedler looks to pass, but it's overthrown, and Keevan Mayhar comes up with the pick. He'd be taken down at the 37-yard line in Titan territory. The Titan defense take them to third and 14, but that wasn't an issue for Olszewski as he gets just enough to extend the drive. On third and four, Olszewski gets the first down and more as he breaks a shoestring tackle and trucks his way down to the three. And that sets up this touchdown pass to Brett Bird. And the Chieftains have their first lead in a game since week two. But it was short lived on the next play as Tony Shoemate breaks two tackles and he darts down the sideline for 55 yards and the score. And just like that, the game is tied once again. On to the fourth quarter, and on third down, Zach Keen finds Jason Azari for a 25-yard reception to move the chains. But the Titan defense wouldn't falter after that, and the drive stalls out. And that would continue on to the next few drives as both defenses stay locked down. Stevenson would get two nice chances to score here, but Brett Berg blocks both. Yes, both passes to save a touchdown. The Titans were then forced to attempt a field goal here, but it looks like a Chieftain defender just gets their hand on it, and the ball goes wide, keeping the game tied at seven apiece. With under four minutes to go, Zach Jacobs makes this nine yard reception and gets the ball into Titan territory. But the Titan defense just won't give Utica any room as Giovanni Alhadi comes up with the sack. With a minute and a half left to play, Jordan Ramsey comes through with a 23 yard reception and he's taken down at midfield. And the Titans are starting to click now, as Tony Shumate breaks tackles and eyes the end zone, but Shane Lutz trips him up just in time. But Stevenson gets in scoring position with under a minute to play. Seven yards to go for the Titans, and it's a trick play. And it pays off as Klein Nedler comes up with the score, and they take the lead with 25 seconds left. And the Chieftains block the extra point to make it 13 to seven. But Utica couldn't make any miracles happen tonight, and the Titans steal this one in a great defensive battle as they go 3-3 three three on the season, while the Chieftains go 2-4. But you know, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of our players. They, they fought hard, they fought hard every play, and um, you know, they left everything out there in the field. The defense have given you a chance to win uh, each game. Talk about how well they've been playing lately. They've been playing awesome. I mean, they, they've done everything that, that we can ask for them to put us in position and uh, you know they've been getting us great field position making huge stops um, you know deep in our zone making huge stops and um, you know they just they've been doing a great job and uh, you know we, we got to help them out a little bit more offensively and, and um, finish some of the drives uh, we're you know we're moving the ball it's just we're we're having a tough time finishing right now. It was a tough week for the Mac White in its crossover week with the Mac Red, and Gross Point South would be the only team in the division to come out victorious. Mac White play resumes next week, and it could decide if the Blue Devils win the division title once again.
With their backs against the wall, the Chieftains face a tough opponent on the road at Warren Mott in Week 7. The Marauders are 4-2 on the season and are looking to rebound from a 31-7 loss to Chippewa Valley. That's all for this episode of the Chief and Rewind. We'll leave you now with sights and sounds from the game. We thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Let's get it!